Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be filming for you a book tag which is inspired by a series of unfortunate events which is so cool. Each of the questions in the book tag is kind of inspired by each of the 13 books in the series and I just think this is so fun. I absolutely love a series of unfortunate events. I read them when I was younger and just found them so gripping and smart and funny as well and I've reread them since and I just love them as much as I did when I was younger so I was really really excited to be tagged in this video. I was tagged to do this video by the creator and that is Alex over at What Page Are You On? So thank you so much for tagging me Alex, I really appreciate it and of course I'll leave his original video down below. Alex is quite a new booktuber like me and I think he's great. He has a really really good book taste. If you like literary fiction in particular then you'll really love his videos and he just seems like a really nice person. <laughs> So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the questions. There are a few. <laughs> so question one is a book that you would consider a fortunate slow burn. So for this question, I'm actually going to answer with an author and that is Anne Tyler and I've read a couple of her books so far and they are A Spool of Blue Thread and A Patchwork Planet. Anne Tyler writes literary fiction novels that aren't really plot heavy or exciting in that sense at all. She just kind of focuses on ordinary people living ordinary lives and she has a really elegant and simple writing style. What Anne Tyler does so well is understand individuals and human relationships, specifically family relationships, and she just does this so well. And so in this sense, her novels are definitely more of a slow burn than anything dramatic or fast paced. Question two is a book with an unfortunate death. For this question I'm going to talk about a book that I only recently just finished and I really really enjoyed it and that is Lullaby by Leela Samani. This is a kind of psychological thriller literary fiction novel that has been translated from French and it opens with two children who have been killed at the hands of their nanny and then it kind of follows the nanny and their relationship with the family and how it got to this point. So this novel definitely focuses around the pivotal point of these two unfortunate deaths but it's also really insightful into themes such as race and gender and class as well and so I'd highly recommend this one if you're looking for something dark and gripping but also a bit more perceptive as well. Question three is a book with an unfortunate setting that you would not like to live in. For this question I'm also going to answer with a book that I just recently finished and really really enjoyed as well and that is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. This is a non-fiction book in which Trevor Noah tells us stories about his childhood in South Africa during the apartheid. So Trevor Noah was literally born a crime as during the apartheid he was born to a black mother and a white father and this book details the discrimination that he faced because of this but also just the violence and crime that was prevalent in South Africa at this time. I found this book to be so educational and shocking for me in learning about South Africa's recent history but Trevor Noah also managed to make it brilliantly humorous and touching and so I'd highly highly recommend this book if it sounds like something that's interesting to you definitely go and pick it up. Question four is a book that was unfortunately laborious to read and my answer to this question without a doubt is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. This is a short classic that I read last year and deeply disliked. It is set in the 1800s and follows our male protagonist as he journeys up the Congo River while he's working with an ivory trading company. While being a really tiny novel, I think it's only like 100 pages long, this was indeed very laborious. I just found it to be so dull and dense and there were so many long passages of speech that just didn't hold my attention at all and I didn't care about any of the characters. It just really dragged on for me basically and I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> question five is the best book that features a fortunate friendship. My answer for this question is Little Women by Louise May Alcott. This is a children's classic that follows the four March sisters Meg, Jo, Beth and Amy as they go through all of the various adventures as they grow up into adulthood. Early on in this novel the girls make friends with Laurie who lives next door and their friendship with him is just so wonderful. Laurie is so good-hearted and fun and the scenes where they're just playing together all the children are some of my favourites in the novel. But Laurie is also just so loving and loyal towards the girls and he helps them all out at various times throughout the novel. This is one of my favourite books. I've reread it a few times since I was younger when I read it for the first time and I would highly recommend it if you're wanting something heartwarming and lovely but also something that has a few moral lessons in it as well. Question six is a book that unfortunately no one talks about. 
So my answer for this question isn't strictly a book that no one ever talks about because it's by a really famous author, but I'm going to answer it anyway because it's one of his lesser known works and that is The Children Act by Ian McEwan. So obviously Ian McEwan is really really famous but I feel like Atonement and more recently Nutshell as well gets talked about all the time but I think this one is really really brilliant and deserves to be talked about as well. The protagonist in this novel is a highly respected and intelligent female judge who presides over family court cases and in this novel we see her faced with an incredibly difficult case in which a 17 year old boy is refusing a blood transfusion due to religious reasons but this blood transfusion could save his life and because he's a minor the decision of what's going to happen falls to the court. This novel focuses on the ethics and the science and the religious themes that are relevant to the case but it also just focuses on the protagonist as a woman and many different aspects of her life as well which is really interesting and so I'd highly recommend picking this one up if you're wanting to read some Ian McEwan. Question 7 is a book that unfortunately or fortunately transformed or haunts you and for this question my answer is going to be A Thousand Splendid Sons by Carla Giossini. This novel follows two women who live in Afghanistan over 30 years, including the time in which the Taliban took over. This is an incredibly moving story about friendship, faith, love and differing ideologies as well. I read it two or three years ago now, but it really had a dramatic and lasting effect on me. It opened my eyes to so many things that I wasn't aware of. And I also remember how dramatically it affected me emotionally. And so I'd highly, highly recommend this book if you haven't read it yet. Question 8 is an unfortunately overhyped book and my answer for this question is going to be one that was extremely popular here on booktube last summer and I felt like I was hearing about it everywhere and that is The Girls by Emma Klein. This novel is set in the summer of 1969 in North Carolina and it tells the story of a young and impressionable teenage girl who gets swept up into a cult that has this charismatic man called Russell at its centre. So I did read this novel last summer during all of the hype that was surrounding it and I did find it to be quite gripping and entertaining while I read it but ultimately I just didn't really find it that impressive at all. The writing was pretty average with occasional kind of flashy sentences every now and again which was probably meant to make the writing better but I found quite odd and there was also a second storyline in this following the protagonist when she was older that I just didn't really care about at all. To be fair to this novel, I did think it touched on some interesting themes of freedom and innocence, but I didn't really feel like it delivered on them particularly well. And so overall, I did think this novel was quite fun while I read it, but it was definitely overhyped. Question nine is a book that is set in the unfortunate future. My answer to this question is The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. This book is told in the not too distant future in the UK where because of some unnamed environmental crisis the UK is becoming submerged in flood water and the protagonist in this novel is a woman who shortly after giving birth to her first son is forced to flee her home and seek safety. This book is brilliant and really really relevant. The discussions of the environmental crisis that was happening in the book was absolutely terrifying and also the themes of refugees and safety was really really touching and of course very important. The book is also told in a really experimental and lyrical way which makes it so beautiful and really allows the raw emotions of the protagonist to come through. This book is very unique and so I would say that if you want something beautiful and quite short but something that will make you think then I would highly highly recommend this one. Question 10 is a book that gets unfortunately plot heavy at the end. For this question I'm going to talk about Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This book was long listed for the Man Booker last year and it discusses two siblings who when they were very young get taken away from the local community by their father and the three of them just live in the remote countryside away from the local community in a house that the three of them built from scratch. On the whole this is quite a slow paced book. It focuses on themes of isolation and what it is to be an outsider and just the kind of natural way of living that these characters experience throughout the book. But then at the end of the novel this tension that has kind of slowly been building throughout the book comes to a head and the plot just basically explodes. I was very surprised when this happened at the end of the novel and while I kind of enjoyed it while I was reading it, looking back on it I don't think it really fits with the rest of the novel very well and I much preferred the rest of the novel which was more kind of reflective and insightful. So whether the burst of plot at the end was good or bad it was definitely unexpected. <laughs> 
Question 11 is a book that has fortunate or unfortunate themes of mental health. My answer for this question is The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. This is a literary fiction novel that tells the story of a protagonist whose brother died when they were younger. This novel is extremely emotional and introspective in focusing on the protagonist's grief and his mental illness and I really appreciated how blunt and unapologetic this novel was in dealing with those themes and it also deals with some really interesting themes as well as this such as resilience, love and yearning. If you are interested in reading books about mental illness and grief in particular then I would highly recommend trying this one out. Question 12 is a book that has an unfortunate or fortunate family and for this question I just have to answer the first thing that came into my mind and that was Matilda by Roald Dahl. As you all probably know Matilda has an awful family at the beginning of this book but at the end of the book she actually manages to find a much warmer and loving family in Miss Honey, her school teacher. So this book kind of has both fortunate and unfortunate families in it. <laughs> And finally, question 13 is a book that you unfortunately wish you could fortunately read again. So this question was quite hard for me to answer because to be honest I love rereading books and all my favourite books I actually much prefer rereading them because I get such a lovely feeling when I return to reading a book that I love and I feel like I can actually just get so much more out of it on rereading it another time. However, for this question, I am going to answer with Stardust by Neil Gaiman because I just remember that the first time I read this was such a magical and wonderful reading experience for me. This novel is kind of like an adult fairy tale and it tells the story of our protagonist as he goes to retrieve a fallen star to give to his beloved. This novel is just so magical and dark and imaginative and Neil Gaiman is just a brilliant writer. So if you haven't read this yet, then I really would encourage you to. So those were all my answers to these questions. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing them. It was such a fun video to film. Thank you so much again to Alex for creating this tag and tagging me to do it as well. I will of course be tagging other people to do this video as well and so I'll leave their names and links down below. There might be quite a lot of people that I'm tagging to do this video because I've just been talking to so many great booktubers recently who make really great content and I've just been enjoying chatting to you all so there's probably going to be quite a few down there but if you're not down there and you want to do this video then I tag you, just go ahead and do it anyway. So as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week with my next video. Bye.